1970 River Rossi Genoa, a 440. Cute little thing. Motor in the tender. Got a drive line that goes up front and makes it goes down the track. Figured we'd pull this out. I've been looking at it for a long time. Want to get it going. Have a little story. Normally I make my thumbnail after the video has been made. But the YouTube professionals out there that have the big channels, they say make a thumbnail first and then make your story go around your thumbnail. So that's what I did. And I tell you, after repairing and working on this thing at the end of this video, my thumbnail, it, it, if I would have made it at the end, it would have ended up looking like this. I recognize. <laughs> yeah, it is. It, it was a bit of a hassle. Come along on this little journey with me. I'll show you how to tear one of these apart, get it all whooped up into shape, fix some problems that you just didn't even know existed before you started on it, and make a pretty decent runner out of the thing. I'm Ron with Classic Model Trains. Let's check it out. Well, here's our Genoa right here right now. And we give her the old, twist the old wick and, oh, oh, oh. Well, earlier when I tried to do that, it, it just didn't do that because of all the filth. Now we got the wick back up. Hello, hello, no, no. Yeah, see, it just, it, it's, it, it needs a good cleaning. We gotta take that apart and clean her up. Before we burn her down kind of a filthy little bugger but let's get it up on the table and whoop it into shape let's get this out here to protect this up a little bit it's a genoa 440 and this one's got a motor in the tender you can see the drive line coming through here and then it's spinning up here on the trucks doing what it does oh and if you jack things out of shape the drive line falls out so let's get this separated here before something ends up getting broken. I need to get the little screwdriver after it. That's a tiny screw there. Oh my goodness. Ooh, way, way tiny. That's like the size of a jeweler. Jeweler screw's tiny. This guy needs the gears cleaned up in it. We took this off, hoping that we wouldn't have to take off the front pilot screw. Yeah, that ain't gonna happen. I was having to take these off because that little spring right there that's hooked into God and everything. Gotta gotta do it though. You can't be can't be feared. Yeah, little screws like that. This one's got a little keeper on it. You see that right in there? That must be oh yeah, so you don't tighten it up so tight that the front truck can't swivel. So it's different than the rear one. Take that out of there as an assembly. See we've got some pickup plungers right here. Working on the inside of these flanges. I see some dirt in here. The steam box. This body's, it's filthy. So of course I want to put it underneath the soap and water, but we got to get everything off. Another little screw. What's going to happen now? Anything more? I want, oh wait, oh, something. So now see, there's always something that falls out. Dang it. Sure. Right where that screw goes, that plastic is completely falling apart. Now that just fell off when I wasn't looking. Ah, this is filthy, but we're losing stuff right there. This plastic is crumbling. And I've had this happen before on my first big boy locomotive I did. I believe this happens from petroleum lubrication being put on the plastic and then the plastic degrades. It's my story and I'm going to stick to it. This has got a substantial weight right here. I'm digging that. A couple more. All these things are held together with these types of screws. Nice weight, which is also doubling as something to catch the oil. We got our upper. Yep. Mm -hmm. The old drive line. Sure. Hex drive right in through here. I see that there's some oil on it and it's old oil. This wheel's gonna come out, that wheel. We're not gonna be able to, bet you we can take this. Is this gonna come straight back out of there? I mean, not that I really want to, but just to see if we can, does it come out? It doesn't really seem to want to. Like it's had better ideas and this is definitely not one of them. So I'm trying to figure out why does this have any pickups on it at all. 
sat here in silence for two minutes and then it dawned on me well because the tender normally the tender offers a pickup for the locomotive but the motor's over here right here it's, it's right here these are all insulated on this one side so that's telling me that it's picking up the juice from this side yep picking up the juice over here on this other side and then it's using this plate to send the juice back to the tender sure i would buy that oh this is frightening to glue that back in Ugh. does the pilot come off no the pilot doesn't come out nothing else is coming off this is riveted on right here there's just no reason to mess with that it's almost like these are squished at the very bottom at the back end if i can open that up will they come out and they'll roll right out of there so it makes it easier to wash these bodies without the metal stuff on them. Here you can see it says Riverazzi, made in Ile for AHM. It's even got a part number, 15552. Somebody's already slipped the old Katie on it. Does this wood load come out from the top or the bottom? Uh oh, now what did I do? I've heard better sounding sounds. Take these trucks out of here. Get them gently out of the way. I want to get inside. That's what I'm. That's what I'm attempting to do. Here, okay. Pickups. Sure. What is that? Doing little washers. Coming off there, underneath the pickups. Yup. Get those gently out of the way. Somebody done. Somebody really ground on that. So you can. Oh. Okay. So the coupler's not in correctly. They just used the old Dremel cutoff wheel and they ground off the original box, got into the body. So that means this is glued on. See, didn't even do a good job right there. You guys, not even a screw in it. We'll fix that. See, somebody's work title tailed on them. If you're going to do it, do it. And if you're not going to do it, don't start it. Something plastic broke out right there. What is this thing doing? How is it doing? What's it doing? It's just sitting there, huh? Okay. Sure. We could desolder it right there. Sometimes you can unscrew these on the newer ones. This one's it's riveted in. It ain't coming off. This rear truck mount holds the motor from flapping in the wind. Now the boiler front just fell off. I like it when I get to see where stuff goes before it falls off. And I had no idea. I'm going to have to look at the picture of this. Figure these out. We don't want none of this falling off while we're cleaning it. Especially in the sink. Because it'll go right down the drain. Let's see if we can get this wire unsoldered right here real quick. Because it's that was super easy. Because that's going to make servicing everything just better. I kind of want to see the inside of this motor. The brush is coming from the front. We can take this apart by getting rid of this motor mount. These two screws here are holding it on. Looks like it'll drop out the bottom. Very little. There's not much thread to them things. This motor's sealed right there. I mean, it's not like sealed, like you never, ever, ever. But God, do I, I mean, I know it works. Do I want to get in there? These brush springs, if we can get those a little out of the way. Let me get rid of this guy. He makes it hard to see stuff. We're not going to be able to clean the armature if we don't open this thing up. Another little tiny brush spring. Come on now. Yeah, a little bit more. Uh-oh. Easy. These ones are worthless. These kind right here are a lot better. We got one brush that came out. It's filthy. Here comes the, oh no. This one, yeah. One's a brush and one is a screen. Yeah. Good old River Aussies. Well, we can still clean those up. But now, see that screen is in there to keep the, the armature shiny. It, it's, it's supposed to scrub it down. And I can look down them brush holes and I can see that armature in there. And it is surprisingly clean yes 
Yes, it is. So I do not feel obligated to pull this off. In order to do that, I gotta pull this coupler off and then it's gonna break, or it might not. Just pry these out of the way, pull this out. Now, I'm not in the mood to do it. We'll clean her up like this. Now that I got everything disassembled, parts are scattered all over, we're gonna start cleaning them up. Toothbrush, Dawn dish soap after the chassis, tenders. Oh yeah, then I get a, I guess I get to glue this wood load back in. So I broke that off because it's just melted in right there. Melted in right there. I guess I didn't want to wait for the glue to dry. Buggers, honestly. Things to scrub and clean. We'll be back as soon as this is all cleaned up. Hey, you want to hear some fun facts about this particular locomotive? I just looked them up. I didn't even have any idea. Uh, starting off with Virginia and Truckee Railroad. <laughs> it's not even close to Virginia. Uh, it's, it's out of Nevada. Right? Oddest thing. Genoa, the name of this thing, it's an American 440 number 12. It's a nickname. I thought Genoa was like a class of locomotives, like big boy. You know, there was like... 24 big boys, I believe. 24? 12. Don't quote me on that. So I thought Genoa's. Nope, just this one's called Genoa. This Genoa had two sisters. They were oh, they were almost completely identical that the Virginia and Truckee Railroad owned. The other ones were named Reno and Inyo. And apparently the Genoa, it's still kicking around. They've got it down in a museum right now. It's all restored. But they restored it to the 1902 version of it, which had some updates compared to the original one that was built in 1873. The restored Genoa is on static display at the California State Railroad Museum, but in 1922 it was swapped out for a couple years to the Nevada State Railroad Museum down in Carson City. So it's getting, it's getting around a little bit. Beautiful restoration, just like this one's going to be a beautiful restoration when it's done. Let's get back into it. We've got everything cleaned up and shined up here. It's just the old Q-tips and odorless mineral spirits whooping everything into shape. One thing I want to point out, once these brushes are removed, you got to clean this, 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 this area right here down inside there. The way you do that is you pull off most of the Q-tip, the cottony part, get this part wet in the odorless mineral spirits, and get down in there and root around a little bit. You can see all this black that's on both ends of this. That's scub that was in there. Mm -hmm. Another thing of interest with these pickups, I cleaned one. Let me see which one did I do here. This one here, I cleaned. You can see that this locomotive has got a lot of runtime on it because it has wore a groove in this. I used the fiberglass pencil after I took the odorless mineral spirits q-tip after it to clean that up and then we've got that. Here's one that I haven't done anything with yet. See how funky that is right there? Come brush out. Don't brush in because you could hook it and bend it. I think that we're going to put a little bit of conductive carbon grease on these things because there's a lot of pitting going on right there. So it makes me curious once they got dirty if they started to arc in this area right here. Because man, oh man, oh man. Those are funky. And the axles, they're not much better. There is a significant area in them right here. As you can just see that there's been wear. I think that this, this poor Genoa has gotten a lot of time on it. I found all the pieces that broke off this, twisted them around until I made the perfect little thing, glued it all together. I sat around and waited. But I know that there's glue down inside that hole. So I don't want to just jam this 256 down in there. I'm going to tap it. Now this is the machine thread 256, but it will thread for a wood thread. And you got to do something. We got to clean this out some because I don't want to break it back off when I try to screw that screw in there. Lots of machining. Oh, are we going to pull this off? Is this working? I hear things ticking and clicking. Uh oh, oh. Uh, ooh, uh, mm, e. Okay, we're in the we're in there about to the third knuckle deep, and hey, it is tapped out, but it's it's. 
I'm not happy with the adhesion. It's got a little wiggle, like a loose tooth. Back when you were just a little one, or your little ones had a loose tooth. We need to get a little bit more something, something on there. And then probably give it the overnight treatment. I can't believe these tips every dang time. I just used it just 10 minutes ago. Now it's all plugged up. So we do this and then I, I blow it out, <laughs> wipe the end off, come back to it a little later. She's plugged up again. Good times. Good times. I got so much light over here that my eyes are dilated and I can't see what I'm doing. Now we gotta let that sit for a significant amount of time. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Sounds like it's cleaned out. We'll just see about that. Well, what can we do with this? We can start putting it together. We can give this little motor just a little taste right down here, a little oil. That was probably too much. Uh-huh. And just a little peck right up in here. Because you don't want the oil, too much oil in here will get down onto the commutator and then it will foul out your brushes. Speaking of brushes, I soaked these in the odorless mineral spirits and I gave them a, a little wiping with the Q-tip. This one here is the brush brush, the real brush. And I remember he was over here on this side. And then this one here is the, is the it's a screen. This side here, you can see it's the side that rubs against the stuff and does its, does its scraping magic. He went over on this side. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. I'm gonna have to roll this like a booger to get it small enough to go in there. Come on now. Yep, that worked. Motor mount. Look at this, it's like a universal mounted motor. These are the old, old ones right here. And I gotta try to get these little tiny, uh, there's one half started. Get this one in here. Come on, get it half somewhat started. Help me out. Do it a little more. Oh, shoot. Did that look easy? Crank these down. First one. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yep. So he was sitting in here, and the rear truck was holding this in. But then the front truck was hiding those bolts. So I believe I could put the rear truck on. Here's like some pickup. Here's another part of the pickup. Make sure we got these right. This is upside down. The pickups are over there. That means I need these pickups because I can see the insulated parts are here. So we're going to put, yeah, yeah, like that. One of these little screws in through this whole kit and caboodle. We need it to be, uh huh, so far. Okay, we finally got that. Hey, I got that motor in upside down. That's okay. Pull this out, flip it out, rotate it, put it back in. So we got to solder this pickup wire back on right there. Mm-hmm. Yep, this cake. Our tender came out nice, but we do got to glue our wood load back in. And we're waiting for glue to dry some more. Oh, I was always waiting for glue to dry. Yes. Another one right there. Well, now I guess I'm going to go back to watching some YouTube shorts while I wait for everybody's glue to set up. I want to clean these pickups down under these areas here as well. Everybody's, every, every little bit, every little bit's going to help. We've already cleaned the wheels. Come through and do this. I don't know about these contact points right there, though. They are, they're just, they're scarred, is what it looks like. So the next day now, our wood load is settled in. So we can focus on getting this thing put back together. So we're going to put it in like that. Latches on the back to hold it. A couple little screws are going to go in up here. Number two, I don't want to bugger up that fancy 
load on the top there. We'll put some protection down for it. We're going to put this truck on, making sure it's timed with the other one, making sure our pickups are all on the same side. And these can be a bit of a pill. I'm digging it. I'm digging it. I want to take some of this premium carbon conductive grease. You can get this from Amazon. They're proud of it. It's like 36 bucks last time I checked. Which is the tiniest bit underneath here. Oh, there's bangy sounds going on outside like fireworks. That's why the dog's having a kitty. A little right there. Do this again, all four of them. Just the tiniest bit. A little goes a long way, is what I'm saying. Yeah, that's gonna help with the picking them up, pick them ups. St still got it on my hands. Ah! Since we're here, a little touch of oil on the outside of these axles for their bushings that they're in. So this guy, it's serviced, it's ready to go. Come to this feller now. Glue set up on it. Got the super lube. Which you can get off of Amazon also. A lot of guys always write me, where do you get that stuff at? Amazon. All of our little towns are losing our hobby shops. So you gotta resort to online stuff. We're gonna get a little grease underneath of these bearings right here. These bushings is what I should have said. That's gonna sit in there. Give this worm gear right here, just a little little taste, some. Got this weight right here. Couple, get a couple screws in on it. This weight right here is real nice. It provides some, some decent weight to the locomotive. Put our rods back in. One there. One, yes. Oh yeah. These were kind of bent up. I straightened them out with the old needle nose. I want to put a little little lube on this brass gear right here. It feels kind of bound up. So I'm going to spin it with the drive shaft by hand and just see. Well, it must have just been an illusion. This screw goes in the center. And this screw here is for the pilot. My repair job on that stud down there appears to be working good. Got to work on getting this all put back together. I guess I never realized that these brass rods were just going straight down. Ugly is all. These two up here, as soon as you put one in, then you got to lift the boiler shell up to get the other one in. And then the first one falls out. And then you put that in, and then the second one falls out. And you go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, until you finally got them in. Screw up in here, holds the boiler on, and then the front truck can be put in place. Oh, that's got that whole plastic, icky, getting ready to break feeling also. Oh, God. Boiler cover hanging out here. Got no lights. This looks like it is locomotive number 12. A lot of nice brass details on it, though, that's for sure. We got to hook this spring here. That's kind of why I didn't want this falling apart. Uh-huh. Ew. The screw with the spacer on it. Make sure that you got to make sure this little bushing underneath here gets through the truck. Did we get it so far? Yes. Uh-huh. Okay. Give this a taste. We're going to give the rods a taste. Interesting how simple this valve gear is. Yes, it is. Get these front trucks just a little, a little taste. We have to do something with the horrible way that coupler was put on. Since they just, you know, took a grinder wheel and just... The old chisel exacto. Come in here, flatten this area out. We're going to have to cut in deep enough for this box to go in. Then we're going to drill a hole and tap it with a 256 to hold that in better. So I'm gonna carve and carve here, and this is gonna be a slow process. Hand drill, okay. So we'll come, we'll come back when that's more 
more closer to being on. Well, we drilled a hole right there. The old number 256 tap and drill set. Tapped it, got some 256 by 3 8 washer screws. These don't have a machine thread on them. And I hope that they're not too long. They might be, I don't know. It is, of course. And since I've neglected to update my bolt collection, I'm gonna have to hack on this one and cut it. Just some, I need to get like an eighth of an inch off. Cause it made a dimple. It made a dimple right there. Cause it was that much too long. I should get on Amazon and order up some 256 screws in bulk. So we don't got to pay the prices at the specialty stores for them. I think that's going to do it. It's on there straight. Coupler wiggles back and forth. All we got to do is attach this little tiny, tiny feller. God, Lee. can barely see what I'm doing with that. Uh-huh. Then I put the coupler in. I don't know if you guys have noticed this or not, but... I went ahead and spent a couple dollars, got myself another new camera. My old iPhone, was it was pooping out. So I ordered off the Amazon, this one here. It's an iPhone, it's an 11. Has better optics or stuff on it, I guess. They're up to what, 15 now? I didn't need one of those, but this one here's quite the upgrade, I'm hoping. That last video I did with the Mahano Mikado, I threw a question out there about doing DCC on stuff. Well, uh, we got a lot of responses on that. People, majority wants to see some classic model trains and how you convert them to DCC. There's about four guys that they're, that they, and they're the ones that said something. All the other guys that maybe don't like DCC, they didn't say anything at all. I'm not gonna change the channel up. We're not, you know, classic model trains is still gonna be classic model trains. We're not going to do a bunch of DCC. There's tons of guys out there doing that. We're going to throw in a few. We'll throw in a few DCC upgrades, converting the classic ones over. The beginning of the video is going to be the exact same. You got to get these things to run correctly firsthand. You got to clean the wheels, re -gre grease them, clean all the old, just the, 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 all that's the same. And then at the, that part of the video, when it's running on DC, I'll stop and give the DCC boys a chance to head on out if they don't want to continue on. And then we'll continue on with how you isolate the motor, how you put a DCC decoder in it, and how you get it going on DCC. So that's going to be something we're going to try out, see if we get more views. Because more views would be, I'd get a raise. I, yeah. And I'm so close to almost not being able to make a living on this <laughs> if there was just more then i could almost just do this full time until i burn out yeah since we've stopped and listened to me yammer for quite some time let's take this opportunity to do this week's classic model trains classic model if you guys know who this is put it in the comments down below if you don't hang out till the end like the usual i'll put it in the comments down below Guys seem to like the classic models from Classic Model Trains. Let's get back into it. I didn't forget to mention one thing. There's supposed to be traction tires over here on this side. I can catch a lip right there. I found myself some micro nut drivers. We can take these side rods off because that's what you got to do to put traction tires on. You can order these off of eBay. Traction tires for River Aussie steamers. I, of course, am at the 13th hour now. Got these things here, hair accessory bands. Is this gonna work? I don't absolutely know until we put one on. They're pretty, pretty gosh darn thick. And I don't know if I'm gonna even be able to get. Leave it to me in my 13th hour way of doing things. Pull it, hook it, wrap it, come on. It is, it's on there. I'm just thinking it's a little wide, but I'm gonna keep trying because this is all I got. Let's get this one over here off also. One more time. Yep, 
We got her all in there. So let's put this on the track and see if it's gonna do what it's supposed to do. Here is an interesting problem. So we got the juices on, okay? Nothing. I had to take the drive line out because this was super hard to diagnose as it, it goes forward really well. Won't go in reverse. So it's running. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's got some, it's got some pickup issues. And it's not shorting out, because my ammeter ain't pegging, but it's got some intermittent opens like you wouldn't believe, even after all the cleaning. Wow, huh? So we get to trace this down and try to figure out what's happening here. Good times. I took the old Dremel with the wire brush after the pickups on the wheels. And we still got, I'm trying to, got, oh, okay. So it goes smooth enough this direction, but you try to put it in reverse, uh-uh. It has kitty fits. No, it doesn't want reverse. And it's kind of like when all the wheels are on the tracks. Boy, this is hard to do. I got the controller the, in one hand and a camera in the other hand and I keep knocking everything off. And I'm kind of beginning to think that this is just a giant pile. Go the other way. You can never start. The gear kind of locks up in it. It could have a million miles on it. And that's why, you know, there's some play in the worm gear and the drive gear, the axles, because oddly enough, it does a really good job going this direction. Smooth. Here comes reverse. There it is. That's all she can do. I think I'll pop that body off and maybe, maybe it needs a shim in there. Something. There's just something going on. Well, here is an interesting predicament that I found. One, this this gear, it's war. There's been a lot of time put on this. And this worm, I've seen better worms. It To me, it looks like it's been used a lot. See these two pickups right here? So when you put this plate on... Those pickups are supposed to be providing juice to this plate so it can send the juice down this way. It ain't picking up from the wheels. These plungers right here, crazy. They're in too deep in the body. This body's completely plastic. This is the biggest pile, River Rossi, I have ever met. We gotta shim these things up so that they touch the bottom of this so that we can get some juice to go from the wheel to that. Currently, all that's really picking up the juice is front trucks. And they're not even doing that good of a job. These ain't made to be picking up the juice these are and then the axles when they're being held in they've got a significant amount of play going down this way which allows the worm gear and the drive gear to to not contact each other and then bind up or strip or anything like that wow so that's telling me that you know these these little bosses right here wore out mm-hmm Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. I think I'm going to get some tin foil, little pieces, put them underneath these. Shoot, pop these out. And we just got to shim it up here, up some. How much? There's a chance that I may be onto something here. Got the old tin foil out of the kitchen. 
did the wrong thing and cut it with my most expensive pair of scissors about seven sixteenths of an inch wide or so kind of like in this area right here and i'm going to fold it up little very very not very wide eighth of an inch is what i'm ultimately hoping for to shim this area up kind of like how this one it's up so we're just going to keep doing this trying to keep it straight flat and level and it, it kind of needs to be substantial too oddly enough I and mean, this isn't it's not getting very thick very fast i'll tell you that so we got the whole thing rolled up trim the ends off i want it to be three eighths we're going to put it at the bottom of this groove and then these guys we're trying to shim them in the up of positions. Is it bulging out right now? Yes. Yes, it is. Wait a second. Let's put this wheel in too. That'll help out our entire cause. Get this screw back in and we should maybe have some contacts now. Look at the play in these wheels. I mean, I, I think this thing is sh it's shot. I really do. We're going to keep doing what we got, what we just did there until I can get juice coming out of both of them flanges. Now we got something here. Much, much better pickups. Go to this side. I noticed that this gear, these brass bushings right here, they're below the surface of this also. So when I screw the, the, the plate on here, there is some up and down i can see that there is a mark right here and right here is where these two things are at i'm going to take a center punch put this on top of a vise and smack it and that's going to put a raised portion right there of just a couple thousands and it's going to allow me to to press this down in there and make it one more tighter so this is what that looks like now and trust me, it's raised it up just the tiniest of little bits. So I'm going to assemble this thing again, and we're going to see if it goes backwards. That's what we're really looking for. It goes forward really good. Okay, let's push the record button this time. It'll make it better to tell this story if you guys can see what I'm doing. <laughs> so let's go right forward. Oh, yeah. Let's try it backwards. That is exactly what I wanted to see out of this wore out bugger. Bugger, yes. Does she creep? Sorta. Three volts. Like a quarter of an amp. I got a nice little load I wanted to pull though too. So I'm gonna go get that rigged up. Seems like this has been a long road to hoe. The work only took, you know, a day less than a day and then filming of course and editing two days but it wasn't that bad once we figured out what the little problem was let's take a look at these you might have seen these passenger cars as we drove by them a little bit earlier these were donated to the channel by a feller named owen mccarthy's out there in the buffalo new york area we got a lionel a little pre-war that we're working on restoring and repeating for him so we sent these cars as kind of a payment for working on working on this stuff Let's twist the wick on this. Oh, absolutely loving it. I wish I had a period correct town for these 1880s, 1890s locomotives and cars here. But I could not be happier with the way that this has come out. It is quiet, it's running. I don't have to bang on it to get it to move. Well, thanks for coming along with this ride with me. Uh, springtime arrived, I think, yesterday. And today we're supposed to get nine inches of snow. So, yeah, first time it snowed all winter up here is on spring. So, thanks for sticking around and watching all the 33 percenters out there. We'll see you here in hopefully less than a week. I'll get another one cranked out. Thanks so much. I'm Ron. Classic model trains. Bye-bye.